Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp Weekly. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate that how you can use the Activity Indicator in Swift UI. Now, Activity Indicator from the UI Kit framework, you know that Activity Indicator is used when you have to show some sort of indication, show the indication like a loading sign or things like that when a task is taking place. So if you want to show the user loading sign, something is loading, you will use Activity Indicator. The problem is that in Swift UI, there is no such thing as activity indicator. But the good news is that you can always use the activity indicator part of the UI kit framework in Swift UI using UI view representable. So let's see that how we can do that. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a new file. This will be a plain Swift file. And I will call this activity indicator, indicator view, because everything is kind of like a view. So I'm just going to add view to it. All right. So we have activity indicator view. Let's go ahead and add that. The first thing I'm going to add is import Swift UI. So there we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and create the activity indicator view. So activity indicator view which is going to be conforming to UI view representable. UI view representable basically allows the UI kit control to be represented, to be used in the, the Surf UI pages. The first property that we will have is a bindable property, which will be animate. This means that you're going to be passing in the value, either true or false from some parent that is going to be using the activity indicator view. Binding simply means that you have to pass in the value, and if you change the value, it will be propagated to the person who actually passed. I'm going to go ahead and also create the style. This will be a UI activity indicator view dot style. Now, just to be clear, this code, I got it actually from Stack Overflow. I will try to find that post. If I, if I can find it, I will link to it. But this code or most of it was actually found on Stack Overflow, just to make it clear. Okay. The first function that we need to implement is make UI view. This particular function, it should return some sort of a view. So I'm going to just replace a UI activator, UI activity indicator view. Now this is the actual view, which is part of the UI kit framework. So if I go into that definition, you can see the UI activator act activity indicator view. So this is the thing that we want to actually return. Now, the other thing that I want to do is I want to return, obviously, something from here. Oops, let's go ahead and close this part. So I'm going to go ahead and create the indicator equals to UI activity indicator view. And we are going to be passing in the style. Well, whatever the style person has passed. And make sure to return the indicator. So there we go. The other part is the update UI view function, which is also part of the UI view representable protocol. The update UI view is that if you want to update the view, so I'm going to say if it is animating, then the UI view, which in this case is a UI activator indicator view dot start animating. And if it is not, then I will say UI view dot stop animating. And that is pretty much it. This is your activity indicator view. Now we just have to go ahead and use the activity indicator view. So I'll go to the content view. Let's go ahead and check out the canvas. The canvas may not really have anything right now because it only has hello world. That's perfectly fine. I'm just going to replace that with a V stack. I do want to show the activity indicator view. So I'm just going to say activity indicator view. And I do have to pass in animating and the style. So over here, I can create another property, which will be a state property. Private var is loading or is loaded, whatever you want to call it. It's loaded equals to false equals to or boolean equals to false. And we can pass in this property. So I can go ahead and say is loading, which is initially false, or is loaded, which is initially false. For the style, I can pass anything. I'm just going to pass in medium. The medium size is fine. The medium style is fine. And the other thing that I'm going to add is that 
the button. The button is going to uh, kind of show you that it's going to be loading some data, but it's not really going to do anything, but it's going to kind of pretend that it's going to load data. So let's say get data, get data from network. We're just saying that it's going to load data. It's not really doing anything, but we do have to create some code that will show that it is actually loading data. All right. Now, if I go ahead and change this loaded to true and go ahead and run this, you can see that the activity indicator view is actually being displayed. But we'll go ahead and make it false. Now, to be really honest, I don't really like this it's loaded property, so I'm just going to call it loading. All right. And loading is fine. And I'm going to pass this property loading. It's just a name. It's just weird. I don't want to use is loaded. So loading. All right. Now, when you click the button, I'm going to go ahead and say that now the loading has actually started. So true. And we are going to perform some operation. And this operation might take few seconds. So I'm just going to fake out an operation, which is going to take two seconds. And after two seconds, we can say loading equals to false because it has already loaded and then do other stuff, you know, do other stuff. Let's go ahead and refresh our page. Okay. So basically what we did is we changed the property name to loading, which is false. When you click a button, we set the loading to true and this actually go ahead and set this property to basically true. And when this is true, well, activity indicator is going to show up. So if I go ahead over here and click on the get data from network button, it is going to take a little bit of time, maybe like two seconds because we have set it to two seconds. And then after two seconds, the activity indicator, well, it should just finish on its own. So let's uh, make sure that this is actually loading correctly. Let's try it again. Okay. So I had to restart my Xcode. It was just a bug or something in the Xcode system or in the Xcode preview. But now when I'm running, I can click on the get data from network and you can see that the indicator shows up and then after two seconds, it is gone. So this is how you will use the activity indicator in Swift UI. If you want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my Udemy courses. I have a course called Swift UI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. This is a 16 plus hours course and I keep on adding new material to it. This is a great course because it starts from the very beginning and it goes down to uh, core data. It even covers core ML and it covers some real world application, which means that it's going to cover Apple Stocks app. We're going to be creating the replica of Apple Stocks application. And we are going to also be creating near me application, which uses map. So it's a great course. Now the best way to get this course is to check out the links in the YouTube description and click on the link in the description. Now, the reason that I'm asking you to use the links is that if you click on the link, it's a referral link, so it will, Udemy will know that you are coming from my site, from the referral link, and I get to keep a little bit more, uh, you know, revenue as compared to if you just found the link on Udemy. So that's the reason I always tell you to use the link. Now, there are also other courses, other links that I have in the, the YouTube referral links in the YouTube description. So definitely check out those also. And in the end, thank you so much. And if you have any questions, let me know.